Welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawing with graphite. So get out your pencils, your cotton swab, kneaded eraser, anything that you think you need to draw with. Have it right handy. And let's draw together. Remember, art makes life better. Thanks for being here and thanks for drawing with me. We're going to be doing graphite only today. Your number two pencil and your 6B graphite pencil. We're also going to be drawing with our cotton swabs, so you should all have cotton swabs. And then that click eraser that you have, it's just a vinyl eraser. You may or may not use that, um, but it's good to have close by just in case. It's more aggressive than the kneaded eraser is. Remember that as we're drawing, you, you draw with the side of your pencil. There's three different reasons why we do that, or more actually. First reason is it's faster, much faster. You get a better line with it. And basically the third reason is it stays on the surface. It doesn't grind it in. So it's easily erased, easily manipulated. You can smear it and do all sorts of things with it. So we're gonna start that way. Uh, we also start with simple shapes. And you want this, this kudu to take up most of that paper. The sky, we don't care about the sky. There's nothing in the sky. And so, but we have some shiny, some uh, reflected light down here from on the water. It's going to be kind of cool. So I would say, let's, let's take about a third of that bottom. We'll have that as water. So I can just come down and go, okay, his nose is going to be about right there. And I want his rear end to be almost up at the top, somewhere up in there. That's how big our kudu needs to be. And so I've just established my size. This is how big I want it to be. And so then we can say, okay, his body, if you look, if you look at our scrap, his neck and his head are about half the length that we've got there. And so I, his body's going to be up in here somewhere. And so you can just kind of put in this little uh, oval bean shape kind of thing and say, that's the body. That's where the body's going. And then he's got his neck that goes down about half between his his head and his neck, so you can take about half of that and go, okay, that's his head, so his head's going to be down here. And his neck is going to kind of, there's a little arch right there, just kind of arch it right there. There's his head and his neck, and you may want to increase that a little bit more or less, depending on what you got. And then you've got his legs that are these spindly little I don't know, they're almost like stick figure kinds of legs. You can just kind of throw that in. There's one there. There's one, you can see it just behind his, his head, his jaw right there. That's one there too. And of course, it's going to attach up in here. Can't see that. And his back leg is kind of a triangle right there. And then another little spindly part right there. It's not straight up and down. It's slight at an angle. You want to just kind of slide it at an angle. This other one's got this triangle. It's almost right smack dab in the middle of the two. You can kind of come in and just go, okay, here's that other leg. And it comes out at an angle. And just go as fast as you can because this is our point of reference. You got to have a point of reference in order to start adjusting. And then his horns, if you want to throw in his horns, this one kind of comes off and curves this way, kind of bounces down, curves up, and bounces. One, two, three. And then this one's going to come up the other way. It kind of comes up here, bounces and follows his neck. There's one there, and it bounces away there, comes up his shoulder, and then curves back up. Now we've got our size. We've got how big we want it. If you wanted to, you can throw in just some uh, little kind of wavy kind of lines. Just say, you know, there's going to be some dark edges there, little dark edges here. There's the ground. He's, he's up on the shoreline there a little bit. There's a little dark edge here. This one's kind of hard to see. You can do something like that if you want, just to remind you that that's water. But most of that we're going to do with our cotton swab anyway. So now you want to start adjusting. Start looking at the length of the legs the, as compared to the length of the body. 
Um, and, and this shoulder kind of comes up there. There's a little bump there, so I'm going to throw in that little bump and up into his rear. His rear isn't rounded. It's just kind of almost pointy. It almost looks like he's kind of a camel back there. And so you just kind of keep adjusting. Don't erase. If it's wrong, don't erase it. Draw it in first and then erase what's wrong. Because if you erase it now, you lose your point of reference. He's got a little belly, a little round belly. And then when you got to that point, no details here. We're just getting our, our sizes and our proportions. There's no hard lines around anything. We really don't want a hard line around anything, really. And so now I'm going to just start in throwing in some dark edges. I'm still using the side of my pencil like this. And so I can just go in and just look at the shapes of the dark that you see. And you can throw those in. Uh, so there's an ear back in there, just this little rounded thing. There's a little ear right there. How close is that to that horn? It's a little closer than I've got it. Maybe I need that horn, a little darkness over there. Here's this. There's a little shadow that goes down his forehead. Let me put that in there. And while I'm at it, that eye is just under that that antler, that the horn, that antler. I guess they're called antlers. So I'm just going to put in that little little dark spot for the eye. We'll get the detail in later. I'm just blocking it in right now. And then down his nose, there's a little dark line there. Dips into the water there. No, no detail yet. Just putting in darks. And even the negative space, the, the negative space in between the legs and his shadow that's there, if you want to throw in that little shadow. Remember, we're not drawing a kudu or a rock. We're just drawing shapes of dark and light. Light's already given you, so all you have to do is draw the dark. Now, this little dark that's up his neck is actually hair that's coming off his neck. And if you want to put that in there, you could. It's just little shapes. I'm just using the side of my pencil just to shade that in. Just that little dark area. Underneath that antler, there's his, his head. And he had this funny little shape for his ear that's almost kind of a funny rectangle. Has a little dark edge in the middle. Throw that in. This little antler that's here, too, I'm going to just see if I can throw in some of the dark and light that's in there. Here's the shadow of his back. Kind of curves around his neck. There's little crinkles across his... I'm just going to throw those in. And I'm not trying to be exact. We can, we can adjust these later. This little exercise that we're doing here is going to help us get our proportions. So as we go, we're, we're looking at the distance between darks and lights, between shadows, and if all we draw is the negative space, then the positive space will come through. Whoever took this picture is way down low. Maybe they've got a camera that is set up on the ground 
Look how low that eye level line is. Clear down here by his eye. He's only inches off the top of that water. That's your horizon line back there. And then there's trees and all that stuff back in there. If we want to put that in, we can put that in with our cotton swab. So don't, don't, don't worry about putting it in right now. There's a rock. Nobody cares if that rock is bigger or smaller. Try to get it as close as you can, but and it's no big deal if you don't. There's his little spindly leg in the back. If you want to, there's these little stripes that run down his back. But rather than do the stripes, try shading in between the stripes. So, for example, uh, there's a little stripe that runs down this way. I'm just going to do a little shading like this and a little like this. I can kind of see where that stripe is, but I can always take my kneaded eraser and come in and just grab that, and there's the stripe. So if you wanted to, I suppose you could do the entire back like this. And then clean up anything with your kneaded eraser. So like this little stripe that's back here, I can take my kneaded eraser and pinch it down to a little knife blade. And then just come in and just... There's one little stripe there. Another one that comes off the back. And if it's not in exactly the right place, that's okay. I don't know if they are consistent in their stripes like this, but you want to be as close as you can. Then when you blend, you'll just blend in between, and that'll those little stripes will be soft and fuzzy. Anything else we need to blend down his neck here is a little bit of area that we may want to blend a little bit. Before we start throwing in any of this detail, we want to just make sure that our proportions are correct. So I'm just going to start looking at it now. I can take my kneaded eraser I can clean up any edges, anything that is just not quite the way I want it. There's no hard lines around anything. And some of those edges kind of blend in with the background. Like, like right here on his leg. I mean, if you can't see it, leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Because you can always put it back in later on. Now, at this point, your proportions are probably pretty darn close. Um, anything else that you need to, to draw in, you can change it, you can alter it, you can get rid of it. I'm just going to darken in some things a little bit because I'm kind of happy with the way it's looking. So now what I can do is before I get out the 6B pencil, before I get out of that really dark pencil, I, I may want to go over some of this and, um, and smear it around. Just give it a little blend. That way it will clean up my edges. Whatever needs to be soft can be soft. Whatever needs to be harder can be harder. 
So I'm just going to take my cotton swab. Now, if you have never used your cotton swab yet, it's going to be nice and clean. And you're going to get graphite on there. If you've used one before and you've got it already, I'd use that used end because it's going to blend softer and smoother because you're going to have graphite that's already on that edge. So how, however you've got it, if you've got an old cotton swab, use that. If you haven't, use a new one and get as much graphite on there as you can. And it's not, you're not pressing real hard, just a very soft, that cotton swab will just blend. Because those stripes are very light, I'm going to try to leave them out as much as I can. If you, if you have a hard time leaving out those stripes, your kneaded eraser will pull them back out. So don't, don't stress over that. And remember, it should be light and, and almost ghost-like because we haven't put any contrast in there yet at all. That contrast will make it pop. It'll make it jump off the page at you. But right now, we're just blending. Keep it nice and soft. This is still on the surface, and we're still able to uh, to erase any of this if we need to. So get that kind of ghosty edge. I really like blending with the cotton swab. It's kind of magical, and it keeps your fingers clean. And once you get down to the head, which is the important part, that's our emphasis area, you can maybe add a little bit of those veins or you know, those little parts with your cotton swab. So little parts of the muscle and... those little soft gray areas, Come almost add those in. And we'll do the rocks in the background with that cotton swab as well. If you just drag it across there, you're going to get a soft kind of a tone. It almost looks like ground and dirt and things like that back in there. Same thing with the hair. You can just grab that graphite that's there, kind of pull it out with your cotton swab. Give it kind of a hairy texture. Then when you're all done with your cotton swab, you hit it again with your, your eraser. And you clean it up, any other edges, any light that you feel like you, you got rid of that you shouldn't have. The water will be the last thing we do. Whenever you draw or paint, you always go with the background, whatever's farthest away from you first. Um, but... Because we don't have a lot of graphite on our cotton swab, then all that background, if we wanted to do it, we might want to wait until we have more graphite on our pencil. The other thing you can do is you can take a piece of tracing paper like this, 
and you take your graphite pencil and scribble it on your tracing paper. And then you can pick up that graphite with your cotton swab. And then you can transfer it. It's kind of like painting with dry medium. I can now go in and I can transfer some of that graphite with my cotton swab. It's almost and it's kind of magical. So that that is one way of doing that if you wanted to. I think it's just as easy to put your graphite on there and then pick it up later. But it's up to you. Once you have that kind of um, ghosty image of your, your object, whatever it is you're drawing, and you've smoothed it out a little bit, what that does, the smoothing out part, just keeps it nice and and, uh, and smooth. Anything you layer over the top of this is going to go smoother. If you go too dark too soon, eh, sometimes it stays kind of streaky. And I, I can't tell you how many people get frustrated with that streakiness because it's like, I can't get rid of the streaky. I just put more graphite over and it's go darker streaky and you got to stop and go yep that's what happens one of the most important spots is the head everybody kind of looks at the head it'll follow the body up and then it kind of comes down the hind legs and you kind of view the, the water and then it goes back to the head the head is very very important so we want to concentrate on the head. Once you get to that point where you've cleaned it up, you know, it's pretty much the way you want it. It's kind of working out for you. You've got your proportions and everything is working out for you. You want to start with that emphasis area and really lock that down. Make that uh, as interesting as you can. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom into this, this picture here. And we're just going to look at the head for a minute. That eye is very important. Look at those little veins up in there and the little subtle darks and lights. We'll be able to get all that stuff. So I'm going to just go in and start with the darkest areas you see. Um, there's a little bit of darkness right here on the, the antler. Across the side of the head. Down the eyebrow, just a little darkness right there. And up over this antler that's over here. You call them antlers or horns when they're like this. I think they're I think they're antlers still. I don't know. When does an antler become a horn? I'm just drawing the darkest areas I see. And one thing that a lot of beginning artists will do is they'll, they'll make a line around something and then they'll shade it in. It's best to just shade it in. Leave the edge nice and soft. Especially on a fuzzy little animal. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna just put in a couple little dark areas because I know I'm going to be blending this. So those really soft grays, I'll get those later on with my cotton swab and my kneaded eraser. Just picking out the darkest areas and just putting those in as quickly as I can. 
but as precisely as I can. I have no idea what his little nose looks like, so I'm just going to throw in the darks and lights and hope it looks right. There's got to be some reflected light in there, too. It's hard to see. No, you just, you just get as close as you can. When you're doing the hair, there's a thing called a feathered line. And the feathered line is you, you drop your pencil onto your paper and then you give it a little flick. Flick, flick, flick. And that'll look like fur. So some of that hair that's coming off his chin, you do the little feathered line for that. And you, you, you don't want to go in the same exact direction all the time. So sometimes I'll flip it down, sometimes I'll flip it up so that it gives it kind of that furry, hairy look. And it's kind of random. I, I might even have a pattern, but if I do, I don't know it. That's a great technique for anything that is fuzzy or furry. I've just left out the antler. There is this little edge of the antler that comes in that's kind of interesting, kind of curves. The rest of that you could probably do mostly with your cotton swab. Throwing a little bit of line in there. I think I'm ready to blend that now with my cotton swab. So cotton swab, a kneaded eraser, maybe a little bit more graphite, but we should be just about done by then. I'm going to start with the eye, just because that's the important part. I'm going to blend that eye. Now there's a highlight in the eye, a little shine in the eye, that my cotton swab is not going to let me uh, be too precise with. So... So I blended that. There's still, uh, that little shine. You take your kneaded eraser, pinch it down to a point, and just hit that. Just touch it. It'll suck that graphite back up out of there. And you'll get a nice little shine in the eye. Touch up with the graphite, and voila, you got it. Piece of cake. Now give it a nice shiny looking eye now just going to try to get some of those very light areas smear out some of those darker ones that i've got And hit the rest with my kneaded eraser. And we should, should have it there. should be good. So 
So then my kneaded eraser, wherever I feel like I need some light, I'm going to touch the bottom of the eye there just a little bit. That, I, I can't really see that happening in, the, in my scrap, but you've got to have that reflected light in there. So with a little bit of that reflected light, I know you can't see it very well, but it makes your eye look a little more lifelike. And then the veins, anywhere you see a little bit of light, if you just touch a little bit, little vein there, little one that comes down here. This is kind of a play between your graphite, your cotton swab, and your kneaded eraser. Once you get the head done, everything else really will fall into place. I feel that way about whenever I draw people. I mean, it's kind of true. That's the part you worry about. And that's about it for the head. Whew, once you get that done, you're like sigh of relief and go, okay, the rest of it's going to fall into place. It's going to be just fine. When you're doing the, the antler, the antler part, let me zoom into the antler part. You kind of just have your darks and your lights. So I can see where it's lighter here. I'm just going to kind of leave that out. Kind of comes along here. There's a little darker edge underneath there. I'm going to put that darker edge in. You just keep going that dark and light because as that curves and twists, it's going to pick up the light a little differently on whichever edge is closer to the light. And then as you blend it, you can pull out with your kneaded eraser any of the little lights. Some of these little areas that are kind of bumpy in there, you might want to leave those for your kneaded eraser too. And maybe maybe if you're going to shade them in, you just kind of do this little zigzaggy shape and kind of grab some of those in, but some of them you can just leave out. Just twists of dark and light. And then for the rest of our little kudu friend, once you get the head done, uh, it really is kind of fast to do the rest of the body, the side of your, your pencil like we did before, because he's fuzzy and he's soft and there's not as much detail as you got in the head. There's probably enough graphite on our cotton swabs that we can do his back and everything with just the cotton swabs. And since we've already put graphite on his, his back, anything we add to it is going to easily smear around.
I don't think we're going to worry about those trees in the background. I mean, they're soft and fuzzy. If you wanted to, you could use your cotton swab and just throw those in, but I don't think there's a reason for them. I think that's his little tail that you see back in there. It's kind of hard to see behind that leg, but I think that's what that is. So if you've got your cotton swab fairly well loaded with graphite, you just come in and just with little back and forth strokes, put in the water. So here's a little dark area here back and forth strokes, here's the water. And you can let it fade out as it comes toward you. Here's some more. And if you need more graphite, you can pick it up from your kudu. You just go into some of those dark areas. And that's it. That's water. Piece of cake. Every now and then, if you think, well, I need some more in there, you can just do these little back and forth strokes. Just back and forth. Make sure they're nice and level. Because water is always at a level. Just back and forth. You can go through the, your little shines. Back and forth. Sometimes I'll turn and twist my uh, my cotton swab too, and it'll give you a different darkness or you know a different value, which is okay in the water. Some little areas might be darker than others. And if you need more darkness, you can go ahead and. Just layer that darkness into it, especially in the ground. Nobody cares about the ground. You can layer in as much dark in there as you want. And the detail, nobody cares about the detail in the ground. A rock is a rock. So you can layer in more dark, blend it a little bit more. You can take that out, put a little bit more into your water if you want to. There's our little kudu. He looks happy. You can take this as far as you want it to go. It can be even more detailed than this if you want it to. It's kind of up to you how far you take it. Some people like things soft and fuzzy. Other people like it photorealistic. Last thing you want to do is clean up anything with your kneaded eraser. 
or darken anything with your pencil that you feel like you need to. And then you get to sign it. A good place to sign it would be probably down towards the bottom on the right side. And there's Kudu. So thank you for joining me and drawing with me today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully art's made your life a little better. Because art makes life better. <laughs>